Every month or so, my wife Mary and I review our nutritional supplements. Recently, Mary asked me, why is it that we take DHEA again? Well, that question got me thinking, what are the real benefits of DHEA, especially for women during menopause? And what about DHEA for men like me? What doses are optimal and how does DHEA have an impact on other hormones like testosterone and estradiol and maybe some others? Well, I've often said that DHEA for women might slightly increase testosterone, but it wouldn't affect other hormone levels all that much. I've posted a couple of videos in the past about using DHEA vaginally for menopause symptoms, and it does work really well for that. It helps with vaginal dryness and irritation and itching and painful intimacy. After diving back into the research on DHEA's benefits and side effects, I kind of realized I needed to take a second look. DHEA for women in menopause is actually a powerful supplement that has a big impact on hormones like testosterone, as well as on estradiol and some others. DHA can have a pretty big impact, especially on women's health. And in the U.S., DHA is actually available without a prescription. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of DHA. Why does it matter? How it affects other crucial hormones? Kind of the pros and cons of a DIY approach versus working with a specialist? the evidence on long-term safety of DHEA, and the best DHEA doses for both men and women. So what is DHEA and why does it matter? DHEA is also called dehydroepiandrosterone. It's a hormone made by the adrenal glands that are on top of your kidneys. It's a precursor or a pro-hormone to other hormones like testosterone and estrogen. DHEA levels peak in your mid-20s or so and sort of go down with age. They affect your energy, your mood, your bone density, your sexual function. DHEA is often called the mother hormone because it gets converted into multiple hormones based on what your body needs. While it's available over-the-counter, at least in the U.S., you need to keep in mind the fact that DHEA can significantly alter those hormone levels, making the right dosage really crucial. Kind of a side note, DHA is actually considered a controlled substance in Canada and maybe in some other countries. Similar to testosterone, it's much more tightly controlled than it is here in the U.S. How does DHEA affect your other hormones? Well, DHEA significantly affects hormone levels, especially testosterone, also estradiol and progesterone, as well as a neurosteroid called allopregnanolone. It's important to keep in mind that the primary source of estradiol and progesterone before menopause is your ovaries. Once you stop having periods, though, and you go into menopause, your ovaries have completely shut down. So after menopause, the main source of estradiol and progesterone is actually the adrenal glands. Those are the same adrenal glands that make DHEA, or at least they used to before you went into menopause. Taking DHEA can make a big difference in estradiol and progesterone levels with the understanding that those levels are really low in menopause. They're only coming from the adrenal glands. 50 milligram doses of DHEA per day can increase estradiol levels 7 to 9 picograms per milliliter, while 25 milligram doses won't do it quite as much. We kind of need to look at where those hormones are starting from, but also where we're trying to go to with those hormones. So here's an example. In DHEA, we can see that uh, from a couple of different studies, DHEA does increase estradiol in women, and we'll talk about how much in just a second. But what I want to look at is the average estradiol level in a study of 4,066 postmenopausal women was about 6.56 picograms per milliliter. So let's just say roughly a little bit less than seven picograms per milliliter was the average for women after menopause. Now, when that woman takes DHEA, the, the studies that I observed were 50 milligram DHEA doses. Those can increase that woman's estradiol by seven to eight picograms per milliliter. So let's just say seven. So that uh, DHEA dose of 50 milligrams has essentially doubled that woman's 
estradiol level, starting at, let's say it was right at seven, it might have been less than seven, but we'll say seven, and then it added another seven, and now she has a level of 14 picograms per milliliter. So that seems like a substantial increase. It's, it's doubled by taking a 50 milligram dose. What we have to remember, though, is that what we're shooting for is an optimal estradiol level. Probably around 100 would be really great. Now, in my experience, it's a little difficult sometimes for women to get to a level of 100 picograms per milliliter on estradiol because they end up having some vaginal bleeding or they have probably most commonly breast tenderness as they get to higher doses. So if a woman can get to 60 picograms per milliliter, that's that's adequate. That's okay. That's in the optimal range. 100 would be great. 60 is okay. Now, if you'll notice though, we've only gotten up from seven or maybe less than seven up to 14 at the max. So we are nowhere near 60 at this point. So even though a 50 milligram dose of DHEA has essentially doubled this woman's estradiol level from seven to 14, it really isn't going to make that much of a difference as far as getting to an optimal level. Now, where this can be uh, helpful is if a woman is just right under that uh, optimal level. Maybe she's at 55 or something and she needs to bump up to 65 or 60 or something. Well, that's where an additional seven picograms per milliliter might make a difference. So if a woman is on estradiol already, adding DHEA may bump her up into the optimal range. Now let's look at how DHEA increases testosterone in women. This is a little bit different story. If we look at the average total testosterone level in postmenopausal women, there's kind of a, a wide range. At the low end, testosterone is around 10 nanograms per deciliter. Don't worry about the units. And at the high end, it's about 26. So 10 to 26 on a total testosterone level is where most women fall after they go into menopause. Now, what can happen is when we give that woman a dose of 50 milligrams, once again, of DHEA, that can actually cause an increase in her testosterone by about 28 nanograms per deciliter. So, remember, she started, let's say, at the high end at 26, and we're adding 28. So, again, we're almost, we're more than doubling her testosterone, just like we doubled her, her estradiol. But here's the interesting thing with testosterone. When we look at the optimal testosterone uh, range, what we're shooting for, what we're trying to get to with women is somewhere maybe between 50 and 67, somewhere in the high uh, neighborhood of 50 and 67. And that testosterone has been increased by that DHEA up to about 54. So we are right in the ballpark of that optimal range. So in the case of testosterone, that additional amount of testosterone that's brought on by that 50 milligram DHEA dose does get that woman into the optimal range. So it is a substantial increase where the estradiol because of where we started from doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, now, when we look at DHEA increasing testosterone in men, it's a little bit different story. The studies seem to show that in men, it's slightly lower of an increase. So in men, they only get about a 21 nanogram per deciliter bump from a 50 milligram DHEA dose in their testosterone. Uh, so the average testosterone in men over about 50 is 394 nanograms per deciliter. And as we can see on this chart here, the DHEA 50 milligram increases testosterone in men by 21 nanograms per deciliter. So it's just a little bump. And we can also see that if we're shooting for a target optimal testosterone of, let's say, 500 to 1,000, I'd actually prefer it be maybe 800 to 1,000, but let's be generous and say 500 to 1,000, we're still not getting all that close to the optimal testosterone level because of the additional testosterone that we got by adding DHEA. 
Now, uh, we also want to look at the increase in what's called DHEAS. DHEA sulfate is the, the, the type of DHA that's tested on a lab test in both men and women. Uh, there's a range for women that's listed on this chart, and that range, it's based on the, the particular lab that we use, is 20.4 at the low end up to 186.6 at the high end, and that's in micrograms per deciliter. Now, my wife is taking a 15 milligram dose. Her last lab test shows that 518 micrograms per deciliter. So that's more than double what the women's range is. So she actually may be on a bit of a high dose. It's not a major problem. She's not getting any uh, side effects or acne or hair growth or that kind of thing. But it's the kind of thing where, well, we want might want to take a look at that and maybe drop her dose a little bit. Now, in contrast, this is my dose. My dose is a 25 milligram dose. Um, the DHEA range for men starts at about 48.9 and goes up to 244.2. My uh, lab result on the DHEAS was actually 477. So I'm actually a little bit high too, but I'm taking a 50% higher dose than my wife is. DHEAS result is actually lower than hers. And so this really emphasizes the the variability. Individuals vary a lot when it comes to their response to DHEA and the measurements of DHA sulfate, estradiol, and testosterone. Progesterone before menopause ranges from 5 to 20 nanograms per milliliter. After menopause, without taking any supplemental HRT, it's usually below 0.5 nanograms or 10 to 40 times less than the levels before menopause. 50 milligrams of DHEA given every day leads to a significant increase in progesterone, while 25 milligram offers moderate effects. Allopregnanolone is a, a neurosteroid that DHEA also affects that impacts mood and well-being. 50 milligrams of DHEA per day can increase allopregnanolone. It's a metabolite of progesterone that helps with anxiety and sleep in most women. How does DHEA affect bone density and osteoporosis? Well, it can have a huge impact on bone health, particularly for women who are at risk for osteoporosis. A daily dose of 50 milligrams of DHEA in women resulted in a 3.6% increase in spine bone mineral density over two years in one study. A 25 milligram dose provided a 1 to 2% increase in bone density. It's still helpful for reducing bone fracture risk. The effects of DHEA on men's bones are a little less dramatic. For postmenopausal women, DHEA does help maintain bone density, and one possible mechanism for this is the increase in estradiol that can come with DHEA supplementation, recognizing that it's relatively small. What's the evidence around the long-term safety of DHEA? Well, there's always going to be concerns about the long-term safety of DHEA and any other supplement. Three randomized control trials, the best type of evidence, tested 50 milligram doses of DHEA for one to two years in both men and women. It's a pretty high dose, especially for women, even a high dose for me. And here's what these three clinical trials found. Increased DHEA-S, that's the way we measure DHEA. Also increased testosterone, increased estradiol levels, bone density improved, especially hip bone density in women. Some studies noted improved libido and skin quality in women taking DHEA. No serious long-term issues were identified with 50 milligram doses over two, one to two years, except reduced HDL in women. HDL is sometimes called good cholesterol, but that's debatable. Mild androgenic effects might be a problem, especially at higher doses. We're talking about unwanted hair growth and voice deepening and acne. Those are common when testosterone increases too much. Remember, 50 milligrams is probably too high of a dose for women, and that's what they were taking in some of these studies. Which is better for DHEA, a DIY approach or working with a hormone optimization specialist? While DHEA is available without a prescription, it's not without its risks. Here's why you might want to have a hormone specialist help you out with DHEA supplementation. First of all, individual responses vary a lot. Uh, higher doses can cause hormonal shifts, as I've mentioned, and hormonal side effects. Even a 25 milligram or a 15 milligram dose can push your DHEA S levels higher. 
regular monitoring. Lab panels are crucial to track your DHEAS, your testosterone, your estradiol, your progesterone. A specialist can help you balance those benefits as well as the side effects. And then the question is, what's the best dose of DHEA for both women and men? Well, DHEA dosing is very individualized based on your gender, your age, your health needs, and how your body responds to a particular dose of DHEA. Women, higher doses of DHEA, like 50 milligrams, have been shown to increase testosterone and estradiol significantly, but they also come with some side effects. 15 milligrams of DHA would probably be a better starting dose for women, possibly working up to 25. For men, 25 milligrams is a good DHEA starting point. That's what I take. Building up to 50 might be considered, but regularly monitor monitoring your DHEAS and other hormones is important. I also got like zits on my forehead with a 50 milligram dose. Talk with a hormone specialist to adjust doses based on your response and your lab work, even more importantly. Is DHEA right for you? Whether you're a man or a woman, kind of depends. Can you find the right dose that offers benefits without too many side effects? How does that dose affect you and your hormone levels? What about your bones and your other symptoms? If you're considering taking DHEA as a supplement, I'm always going to recommend that you work closely with a trained, qualified hormone optimization specialist. That's somebody with the experience and the expertise to know what to expect with DHEA and know exactly what to do if things don't go exactly according to plan. Visit my website at simplehormones.com slash referral to request a referral to one of the specialists that I recommend, ones that are on my hormone provider database. If you're struggling with the decision about hormone replacement therapy for menopause symptoms, my course, The Menopause Solution, can really help you make that decision. Click the link on this video for more details on the course. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons. Click that share button and ding the little notify bell to make sure you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.